Australia, the country where if you own property, you're treated like this. Hello, boy, you out of my heart. You're embraced, loved, and given extra special benefits to succeed financially. But if you don't own property in Australia, you're basically thrown to the financial curb, abandoned, and left to fend for yourself. I'm Biko Konstantinos, and that's what we're going to talk about today. What do you call it when a Greek goes down the elevator? Condescending. And what do you call it when you don't have some independent analysis and commentary from an Aussie Greek who's slightly entertaining? I call that a tragedy. So please click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. My goal is to keep you informed of the big stuff. And right now, housing is some very big stuff that's affecting millions of lives. So how did we get to this terrible situation as a country where property owners are loved and supported and non-property owners are basically hated and push towards poverty. Well, prior to the 2000s, the culture around housing was more about having somewhere safe and secure to live and raise your family. And that's because housing was relatively cheap compared to income. It did rise in value, but those rises were closer linked to inflation and linked to increases in wages as well. So during the 70s, 80s and 90s, housing didn't actually seem to get more unaffordable because their rises in value were modest and that meant there wasn't such a rush to have to get into housing too early because even if you waited a few years buying a house didn't become more unaffordable but everything changed in the early 2000s house prices started rising in value way faster than wages and Australians are a smart bunch so it didn't take long for people to see this happening in the markets so over time as the gap between house prices and wages kept widening the following insights started to become ingrained in Australian psyche by owning your own home, you can grow a lot of wealth by doing nothing other than living in that home. Since so much wealth is created by doing absolutely nothing, why not buy more properties so we can leverage more of those gains and create wealth even faster? But if you don't own a home, the longer you leave it to buy, the more unaffordable homes become. So for young adults, it's pretty much priority number one to purchase their first home. And if it's not your own priority, everyone else will tell you that it has to be your priority. And that's because property ownership has worked so well for them, you'll be seen as crazy if you don't get in on it. You crazy! So after nearly two and a half decades of these insights, it has become so ingrained in Australian culture that now we're a nation completely obsessed with property. And guess what? The entire country is also obsessed with supporting the housing market and supporting conditions where house prices keep rising astronomically. In other words, Australia loves property owners. And here's the reasons why. You get unbelievable tax concessions for owning property. Probably the biggest concession of all is that you pay no capital gains tax on your principal place of residence. Now the logic behind this rule makes some sense because you don't want someone to have to pay massive capital gains just if they want to move homes. However, this is an extremely huge advantage that property owners have over non-property owners because with property rising so fast, they're making all these tax-free capital gains, whereas someone who doesn't own a property makes zip. Nada. Rien. You get Nothing! Now consider the effect of this no capital gains tax rule during the COVID period. If you were fortunate enough to have owned your own home prior to COVID, the government and central bank policies artificially inflated property prices by over 30% in most states. So just say the median house price prior to COVID was $700,000. If that $700,000 home rose 30%, it's risen by $210,000. So just by owning the median priced home, home prior to COVID, you've made over 200,000 capital gain completely tax free. And you might think, yeah, but that's nothing because all houses have risen. But compare that to someone who doesn't own their own home. You've made all these tax free gains that a non homeowner could only dream about. And there would have been many people prior to COVID who were just a little bit too young or who were still trying to save enough for a home deposit that completely missed out on all those gains. Who's too young? Yeah. 
on top of no tax for your own home, property investors also get extremely generous tax concessions. And this is in the form of negative gearing and capital gains tax discount. So what negative gearing does, it allows property investors to buy more properties than they normally would because they normally get a tax refund for any losses they've made on owning that investment. And like Albo said prior to getting into government, it supports investors to buy more and more properties. We're in danger of developing a society whereby some people are able to buy their sixth, seventh, eighth home, but people trying to get into the housing market to buy their first home simply aren't able to. And then with the capital gains tax discount, when they sell any of their investments, their tax payable is greatly reduced and becomes even less than the tax that you pay on your wages. Taxes have such a large impact on your take home pay from your wages, but gains on property are extremely tax effective. So property owners are able to keep either all of their gains or more of their gains. Next, we've got government policies that ensure there's always massive demand for property and this ensures that property prices keep rising. First, the government runs a high immigration policy and since COVID, those levels have gone through the roof as the government has opened the immigration floodgates. Australia's population has now reached 27 million and did you know that we've reached that level 30 years ahead of some previous predictions? So the government seems to love high immigration because it helps the overall economic GDP figures, but every person entering Australia Australia needs a place to live and when there's not enough houses being built for the surge in population it increases demand for those properties which inevitably sends house prices rising. Then we have foreign ownership of Australian property. You see wealthy foreigners aren't stupid and they know how fast property prices rise in Australia. So why wouldn't they park some of their money in Australian real estate and just let it rise in value over time because they know that the property market is so supported in this country. And especially when places like China are seeing a real estate crisis, there's going to be even more incentive to take your money out of that market and put it somewhere that's almost guaranteed to rise. Forget the horses, our property is a sure bloody bet. We've got an entire banking system that's completely dependent on the property market staying strong. And this means that the banking system in Australia, which controls so much power, would never want to see house prices decline significantly so they want to see ultra high house prices and there's also many other vested interests that also want to see ultra high house prices and that includes those industries like real estate insurance etc but it also includes the government who make massive revenue from things like stamp duty and land tax and then we have Australian politicians they own an absolute stack of property, a way higher percentage than the average Australian. And of course, they want their property portfolios to grow in value because that means they get richer. So Australian politicians, who you would think would know the most about government policies and their impacts on house prices, basically own a crap load of property. So from that, I think it's pretty clear that they know Australia loves property owners. But often where there's love, there'll also be hate. And very sadly for Australia, non-property owners seem to find themselves in that category, especially when it comes to financial opportunities. Instead of winning the financial lotto like property owners have, if you don't own a home, your financial circumstances seems to get worse and worse. So non-property owners generally pay the highest percentage of tax because many of them are only getting income from their wages, which is taxed at a very high percentage. Percentage. So they're unable to claim many tax concessions, which means a huge proportion of their income is taxed away. But then once they get their net income, they have to pay a huge chunk out of that to rent. And like we've seen how policies create ridiculous demand for housing, this causes house prices to rise, but it also means rents end up surging. Now, if rents rise faster than wages, like they definitely have over the last couple of years, it means that each year, renters will pay a larger proportion of
of their net income towards that rent, which means they're left with less and less disposable income to be able to invest some of it or try and save for a home deposit. And you hear all these comments from people who have made unbelievable gains from property saying that renters should just work harder and sacrifice more like they had to and all this sort of stuff, but they don't realize that each year it's getting harder and harder to buy your first home. But also each year it's getting easier and easier for property owners to buy an additional home. That's the bloody irony of it all. But even worse than non-homeowners going backwards financially, they now have to go through a prolonged housing crisis where they've got no security in having a place to live. And this is because we've got so much demand for housing that the rental vacancy levels are at all time lows. And sadly, Australia's rental vacancy levels are some of the worst in the entire world. So many renters are only one rent rise or one eviction away from living on the streets. Consider the situation if you don't own a property and you reach retirement age. You might have to keep working until you pretty much die just so you can afford to pay your rent. Or you might have to move in with four or five other retirees and live out your retirement in shared accommodation. So you've worked all your life, paid a crap load of taxes, of which billions are given to wealthy property owners so they can have tax concessions. And then as a reward for all your hard work, you get to live in poverty. Welcome to Australia, where if you don't own property, you're treated like absolute shit. I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>